Alrighty, welcome back, boys and girls. It's your main math man, Mr. Shane, coming to you live from Summit Academy. In this video, we're going to be still working on that interim two practice, and we're going to be finishing up for this part two. So it says Latusha Nail Salon has two stylists. The rate at which the stylist finish uh, finishes with clients is shown in the table below. The rate at which the second stylist finishes is shown in the graph below. So the first stylist has this table where the X values are the time and the Y values, the number of clients. And the same idea with stylus 2, this shows graph where the stylus, uh, the number of hours is on the X axis and the number of clients is on the Y axis. So it says how much faster is stylus 2 that compared to stylus 1? Use what you know about unit rates to determine what you, or to explain what how you determined your answer. So it says this problem will be worth three points. So you need to be able to show your work for this. So two points for finding the unit rate of each stylist. So we need to find the um, unit rate of stylist one and stylist two. So that's two points. And then finding the difference between the unit rates, meaning how much faster is stylist one. So we're supposed to know that stylist one, uh, two is faster than stylist one. And so what we can do is some ideas that we have here. So let me make this. Uh, let me actually, write, I can write this on here. Always use that space provided. Also, make sure you're saying, you know, slope is the same thing as unit rate. Because we, we just say, normally we just say it's the change in Y over change in X. And what we can say for this is it's going to be our for both of these situations, it's going to be the number of clients, and we're going to say time, or hours, is going to be on our x. So find our change in y, find our change in x, write it as a fraction, and then be able to compare those two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first say, well, if I look at stylist 1, what's my change in x going to be? Well, my change in x is just going to be plus 2 because for each step it's increasing by 2. And then for my change in y, so let me, sorry, let me label that as x, and my change in y, well what's that going to be? My change in y is going to be plus 8. Plus 8, plus 8, and so if I write that as a fraction, I can write it like this, I can say, well, uh, my slope or my unit rate is going to be 8 over 2, which is the same as equal to uh, 4. So I'm going to say that's going to be 4 clients per hour, and I'll write that here in a second. So that's going to be the slope for stylus 1. And then for stylus 2, let's do a different color, uh, let's say, let's find out you know, it goes to the point zero, zero. We go to the right one and we go up six. So notice how our change in Y was six and our cha uh, change in X was one. So you could write, you know, that's almost like it's six over one. And if I follow that pattern, I should go one step up. And since it's counting by twos, it's three steps up. So notice as I follow that pattern, you know, it's counting by it's increasing by six each time. So this is what I'm going to write. So let me make this a little bit smaller uh, here in a second. About something like that. Okay. So now what I can write is this. I'm going to say, all right, stylist one. I'm going to say stylist, stylist one has eight over 2, which is equal to 4. So we're going to say that they have 4 clients. Make sure I spell that right. Clients, CL, there we go, per hour. And let's write out what stylus 2 had. Again, find that slope of this line. Be able to say, all right, stylus 2, stylus 2, as 6 over 1, which is the same as just 6. So we, we're going to say that 6 uh, clients per hour. 
All right. And so the, that's going to be only worth two points because we need to say, okay, styles one, unit rate, styles two, unit rate. And then our third point is going to be finding the difference between those two. So that's real simple because we say, you know, what's six minus two? So we do, again, we say six, or sorry, six minus four is equal to two. And so we're going to say this. We're going to say, in conclusion, we're going to say stylist two has two more clients per hour than stylist one. So you need to make sure that you're, you know, writing those three parts to get that full credit. So be able to show your work, find that unit rate, again, find that change in X, that change in Y. Again, that, sorry, this was my Y was my number of clients. When you go to find the ordered pairs, be able to plot them on the graph. All right. In number 11, it says Pierre is comparing the price of pineapples at two different stores. For both stores, the relationship between the number of pounds of pineapples and the cost is a direct proportion. Meaning it goes through the point. Goes through... Point zero zero. Okay. So it says store A, if you, if you bought three pounds of pineapples, it cost $9.36. And then for store B, it gives you a graph here. It says which sentence correctly compares the cost per pound of pineapples at A and B. So we're going to have to find the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find uh, store A. Let's find the cost per pound. So find find pineapple or let's say find cost cost per pound so we have to find that unit rate again and it's just like we're finding the slope and so we're going to say you know we have the a dollar amount for every one pound and so in store a that's real simple to do because it says if three pounds is this much how much is one pound so we take 9.36 divided by three to be able to get our rate. So we're going to say it's going to be $3.12 per pound. Now we can find the cost per pound for our store B. So let's find that one. Again, it goes to that point zero, zero, and then it goes through the point two comma nine. So that means I have nine dollars it costs nine dollars for every two pounds if i divide that out nine divided by two is going to be four point five zero so it's going to be four dollars and fifty cents per pound per pound all right so what are some of these options well it says that first one because it says which sentence correctly compares the cost per pound of apples at a and b or pineapples at a and b it says the cost per pound at store a is $1.38 less than store B. So let's find it out. So if we subtract those two, so find, find the difference. Again, be able to subtract. So I'm gonna say I have this amount, $4.50, minus our store A amount, which is $3.12. And I would say, well, that's going to be a dollar and thirty-eight cents, which is exactly what we were looking for. So make sure you're careful when you're finding that. You're saying, okay, which one costs less than the other? So we're saying this is this was store B and this was store A. So there's a difference of a dollar thirty-eight. And so right away we can cancel out and say, okay, it cannot be these two answers because it has you know three dollars and twelve cents so we're not working with that but we could say the cost per pound at store a is less than store b so yes we're going to pick that one there so we're going to say that it's going to be that first choice so be able to find that unit rate 
be able to divide. So that way you can find your change in y divided by your change in x. All right, switching up a little bit, we're now talking about this Pythagorean theorem. And so it says, look at the right triangle in the diagram below. Based on your knowledge of the right triangles and the Pythagorean theorem, what is the area of the empty square? So anytime you see that wonderful phrase, Pythagorean theorem, we're saying this. We're talking about the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where this is for a right triangle. All right. <clears throat> and what we can do is we're saying, you know, the squares, meaning the area when your side length is five. So this would be, so for example, I could do five, I'd substitute this in, I would say five squared plus 12 squared equals c squared, because we're trying to find what c squared is for this. And you've got to be careful because it's asking for the area, meaning the squared squared number. So what we're going to say is we're going to say, all right, you know, uh, 5 squared is going to be 25, and 12 squared is going to be 144. Again, make sure that you're seeing how to do this, and I'll show you here in a second. So it says add those two together to get c squared. So 25 plus 144 is going to be 169. And usually, again, usually we're finding this side length because we're trying to figure out that we're trying to figure out that side length of the right triangle, the hypotenuse. But for this one, we just have to find the area. So we're going to say it's going to be actually C since it's 169 square units. So that's going to be the area of this large square. And let me show you real quick. If I was trying to find the square of something, I pull up Desmos real quick for you. Okay. And let me share. There we go. Okay. So again, when you have your Desmos calculator, make sure you can use that bottom left amount. So let me actually move that over a little bit. Now we can see the little keyboard. Okay, so I'm talking about this little button right here. Again, click on that show keypad. And if we're trying to find, you know, 5 squared, you can do 5 squared plus 12 squared. We'll be able to find it. But be careful because if you have to find the square root, meaning the side length, we would take the square root and we would say, okay, square root button of 169. And so that side length, that side length would be 13. Be careful when you're switching between these two. We have to find the area, so we would say that answer is 169. Okay, so let me hide that for a second. And let me go back to this. Okay. And number 13, it says, uh, consider this right rectangular prism. What is the length in inches of D? And I, I gave you a hint. It says you must first find the green length, which is going to be that bottom length, and then find D. So set up your two right triangles and then find their hypotenuses. So we first need to draw the right triangle that's going to be in the bottom. And this part is actually cut off a little bit. So this is supposed to be a three right here. But what we can do is to find that uh, green hypotenuse, we can draw it out, and so I'm going to have my first right triangle, and we're going to be looking for this green side x, where our legs are going to be 3 and 4. So we use that Pythagorean theorem, we're going to say a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and we have we have 3 squared plus b, or sorry, plus 4 squared is equal to x squared. And so we just find those perfect squares by multiplying 3 times itself. So we're going to have three, 3 times 3 is 9, and 4 times 4 is 16. And we're saying those two added together is going to be 25. And that last part, we may need to make sure we're doing that square root. So use that inverse operation to get that x by itself. And so we're going to say square root of 25 is just going to be 5. This 
say x equals 5 for that. But we got to be careful because now we say, okay, if this is equal to 5, we now need to find the, the diagonal of this rectangular prism, which is that length d. And so in order to find that one, we're going to say, okay, it's going to be our red triangle. So we draw a little bit bigger. But it's the same idea. We're saying, you know, we're finding the hypotenuse, which is this side length d. Try to draw it a little bit better. There we go. It's going to be a side, side length d, or our hypotenuse d. And our height is going to be 12, and our other leg is going to be the one we found, which is 5. And so since it's the hypotenuse, we know that it's going to be the longest side. So our answer must be greater than 12. We're going to set it up the same way. I'm going to say I have my Pythagorean theorem, so I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to say I have uh, 5 squared plus 12 squared equals d squared. And so this is going to be 25. This is going to be 144. And that's going to be d squared. Add those two together. Still 169. And like I showed you in the previous uh, problem, you need to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get rid of that d squared. And so we're going to say 13 is equal to d. So make sure, or sorry, also to make sure you say 13 inches. There you go. So 13 inches is equal to that diagonal length D. So make sure you're setting up your right triangles. You use that Pythagorean theorem to solve for the missing side. Similar problem in number 14. You use that picture to be able to guide your answer. So it says a ladder ha that has a length of 17 meters leans against a wall with the base of the ladder eight meters away. Eight meters away from the bottom of the wall. Use this information to find how high above the ground the ladder meets the wall. So solve for x. So we're not going to be finding the hypotenuse. So, so we can say uh, x will be less than 17. So if your answer is more than 17, you know you messed up or you need to do something more. So still the same setup. We're going to have our Pythagorean theorem. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Be able to say that, okay, if this is our right angle, across from that right angle is that side length c, and these other two sides are our side lengths. So you have your formula and so now you need to substitute in your side lengths and so I can say all right one of my legs is going to be x squared and one of my other side lengths or my legs is going to be 8 squared. And so I say that's set equal to our hypotenuse which is 17 and then squared. So make sure you're using that Desmos calculator if you need to but I'm going to say all right I have still x squared plus 8 squared, which is 64, and I have 17 squared, which is 289. So make sure you're finding those side lengths. Now we need a two-step equation to be able to solve for x. So instead of adding these two together, since they're on different sides of the equation, I need to subtract. So I'm going to subtract 64 from both sides. I'm going to say if we have x squared, that's going to be equal to 225. However, again, our x, our answer, has to be less than 17. So we know we have one more step to do. So we're going to take the square root of both sides, take the square root of x squared, and the square root of 225. So I say x is going to be equal to, we're going to say 15 and then meters because we're talking about that side length. Right. And then moving to the back page, it says here's a right triangle, ABC, as shown in this picture. It says what is the closest approximation of the length of the hypotenuse C of triangle ABC? So again, if you want to label your sides, you can, but we're going to say, you know, if this is our A and B, we're looking for that hypotenuse because it's, notice how it's across from our right angle. Hypotenuse across 
across from right angle. So once you have that, we can say, all right, we have our formula. So I'm going to set up my formula. So I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Substitute in your values for your variables. So we're going to say we have 4 squared plus 8 squared is equal to c squared. So we're going to say that's going to be 16 plus 64 is equal to c squared. And add these two together say that's going to be 80 equals c squared and we're not going to get a uh, exact amount but it's an approximation so if you need to we can round but we're going to say you know if we take the square root of both sides take the square root of both sides we're going to say that's going to be we're going to say uh, approximation so not exactly equal but we're going to say it's going to be pretty close to 8.94 again make sure you're you know, using that Desmos calculator, so let me pull that back up one more time. And we'll clear this out. So we said, uh, where are we at? We had 4 squared plus 8 squared gives us 80. And then what we say is we take the square root, so make sure you use that little square root symbol, the radical symbol, and we're going to say square root of 80 and notice how it gives us this long decimal but we can say you know round it to the second decimal place it's going to be the closest number is 8.94 so anytime it says approximation make sure you're getting a number that is close to it so we're going to say okay here's here's what we have and so we're going to pick that answer choice which is c for that one all right and last but certainly not least is another unit rate problem but it says Julio is buying tires from an auto shop. The auto shop charges a one-time delivery fee and an amount per tire. Then it says this table shows the total cost, including the one-time delivery fee for certain order sizes. Which expression or which equation expresses the total cost, which is y, as a function of the number of tires? which is x ordered. So we have to come up with that linear function where we have y equals mx plus b, again, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. And so what we can do, it's similar to uh, that stylus problem, we can find our slope. And so if I say, all right, my change in x is going to be the number of tires, or my change in y is going to be the cost in dollars. So I'm going to write y on that one. So let's find our change in x. We're saying we're increasing by 2. So we have plus 2 for each of those. And then for our cost in dollars, what's changing? Well, if I look at the difference between the first and the second, we're saying we're adding 120. And it actually works out because each of these is going to be adding 120. But you have to be careful. You need to write your slope like this. We need to say, all right, slope is going to be that change in y. So that change in y or that change in x. We're going to say that's going to be equal to, we have 120 divided by 2. So our slope, our slope is going to be 60. So right away, you know, if we look at some of these equations where the place of m is, we're going to have 60. So which of these answer choices does not have 60 as the slope? So we can cancel out a and we can cancel out d because, so we can say a and d does not have a slope of 60. And then if we look at b and c, well, what's the difference between those two? We look at the y-intercepts and we can say, well, we can plug in and check it out. So that first one, we should be able to say, all right, the first order pair is going to be 2. So we say we have 133. So use, let's say this, it says use first ordered pair to find y-intercept. And so what we can do is we can say, all right, our y value is 133. And if we we know our slope is 60, so we're going to say 60 times x, which is 2, and then plus b, because we need to solve for b. 
So this is going to be uh, 120 plus B equals 133. And we subtract both sides by 120. And we can say, hey, B is going to be 13. So that means that our answer choice C does not make sense for this problem. And that makes sense, uh, works out because if the original or the original charge was $133, that would be a lot. So we're going to say our answer choice for B is going to be Y equals 60X plus 13. And that should work for each of those problems. And so a way to check, we can say check by graphing. What you can do is this. I'm going to pull up our calculator. And let me clear this out, and let me put it back here. Okay, so if we have this as our calculator, we can say, all right, y equals 60x plus 133. And what we can do is we can actually, or sorry, not 133, uh, just 13. There we go. Let me change change these a little bit so that way it's a little bit easier to say C. So let's start at zero and let's count by steps of two. Let's go the whole way up to 10, that's fine. And let's count by 50 and let's go up to, for a Y, let's go up to 500. All right, so that way it's a little bit easier to see. So here's our graph. Let's see if these points are on the line. So we have the ordered pair 2, 133. That point is on the line. The point 4, 253 is on the line. What about the point 6, 373? That's on the line, and 8, 493. So notice how each of those points, even though they're you know spread out, that's okay. We're saying that each of those points is on the line because they are solutions to this equation of y equals 60x plus 13. So make sure you can pause, rewind, replay as needed. Make sure you can ask questions as they come up. And as always, super slam that subscribe button.